the concentration effect and the second gas effect are phenomena observed during the administration of inhalational anesthetic agents, particularly nitrous oxide which affect the alveolar concentration of all other gases in the gas mixture. First, we need to understand what the concentration effect is, to comprehend the second gas effect. The phenomenon by which the rise in the alveolar partial pressure of nitrous oxide is disproportionately rapid when it is administered at a higher concentration is called the concentration effect. During normal respiration, the gas exchange between the alveoli and the pulmonary capillary blood involves gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oxygen diffuses into the blood, and carbon dioxide diffuses back into the alveoli. However, the bulk of the gas we breathe from air contains nitrogen, which is responsible for maintaining alveolar volume. The partial pressure of nitrogen in the alveoli and the blood is in equilibrium, so minimal exchange occurs between them. Now let us see what happens when a high concentration of nitrous oxide is delivered in the fresh gas. Nitrous oxide is about 30 times more soluble than air or nitrogen. Due to its higher solubility, it diffuses rapidly from the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries. The fast diffusion of nitrous oxide reduces the volume of gas in the alveoli, which increases the other gases remaining in the alveoli. This is the concentration effect. Furthermore, as the influx of a high concentration of nitrous oxide from fresh gas replaces the lost volume, the concentration of nitrous oxide in the alveoli increases again. With this, nitrous oxide continues to diffuse into the blood, and the concentration effect occurs repeatedly, resembling a positive feedback loop. This process, whereby the inflow of nitrous oxide replaces the lost alveolar volume, further amplifying the concentration effect, is called augmented gas inflow. To clearly understand the concept, let's illustrate it with an example. Suppose a patient's lung capacity is 4 liters. The patient inhales a mixture of 2 liters of nitrous oxide and 2 liters of oxygen, with each gas contributing 50% of the mixture. Since nitrous oxide diffuses much faster than oxygen, half its volume or about 1 liter rapidly diffuses into the blood, leaving only 1 liter of nitrous oxide in the alveoli. We would expect that the concentration of nitrous oxide to be 25% as half of it has diffused from the alveoli. But, since the initial alveolar volume of 4 liters is reduced to 3 liters, the new concentration of nitrous oxide in the alveoli is one-third of 3 liters or approximately 33%. This is the first phase of the concentration effect, referred to as the concentrating effect where nitrous oxide concentration increases even after it has rapidly diffused. Now the reduction in alveolar volume by 1 liter creates sub-atmospheric pressure in the alveoli, prompting the patient to inhale an additional 1 liter of the gas mixture containing 50% nitrous oxide and 50% oxygen, that is 500 milliliters of each gas. With this additional inhalation, the total alveolar volume returns to 4 liters, now comprising 1.5 liters of nitrous oxide and 2.5 liters of oxygen. The new concentration of nitrous oxide in the alveoli is 1.5 by 4 or approximately 37.5%. This is the second phase of the concentration effect. Known as the augmented gas inflow effect or ventilation effect. This process will occur only during the initial phase of nitrous oxide administration. Once steady state levels are reached in the alveoli and bloodstream, these effects diminish. The second gas effect is not a different concept from the concentration effect. It is a special case of the concentration effect and applies to the administration of a potent anesthetic with nitrous oxide, where the rapid uptake of nitrous oxide enhances the uptake of a second inhaled gas. This effect is clinically significant in accelerating the induction of anesthesia when nitrous oxide is co-administered with another anesthetic agent. We will use the same illustration to explain the second gas effect by adding isoflurane so that the inhalation mixture consists of 1% isoflurane, 49% oxygen, and 50% nitrous oxide. A 4-liter volume is inhaled by the patient and contains 40 milliliters of isoflurane, 1960 milliliters of oxygen, and 2000 milliliters of nitrous oxide. As half of the nitrous oxide diffuses quickly into the blood, the alveolar volume reduces to 3000 milliliters. The new alveolar concentration of isoflurane is now 40 divided by 300, or 1.33%. The concentration of nitrous oxide doesn't reduce by half and is now 33.3%, and like isoflurane, the oxygen concentration increases to 65.3%. As we can see, the concentration of the second gas, isoflurane, increases. This is the concentration effect. 
Due to the sub-atmospheric pressure created in the alveoli, a further one liter of the gas mixture is inhaled during the second breath, which contains 10 milliliters of isoflurane, 490 milliliters of oxygen, and 500 milliliters of nitrous oxide. Therefore, the new alveolar concentration of isoflurane is 1.25%. This is the augmented gas inflow part, where despite administering 1% isoflurane, the concentration of isoflurane in the alveoli is more than 1%. The second gas effect increases the partial pressure of anesthetics in the alveoli, increasing the FA-FI ratio and accelerating the speed of induction.